We've heard a lot of good information this morning, and I'm so happy to be able to be back here with you uh, and offer some of this information about the uh, things that have gone on in the past and, uh, and even looking to where we're headed in the future. And the state of agriculture embodies both the, the past and the present. Uh, and the future is the very most important part of that. And uh, we have got to continue to reinforce and invest in agriculture uh, because it's changing. And I want to look back over the past two years and see how we have balanced those efforts uh, in the present and the future. Uh, are we willing to build in blocks and plates uh, to root the industry and meet that growing demand for food that we know is going to be there in the next 20 years? And I think the short answer is yes. Uh, there's more to say about this, and, and I wanted to talk uh, a little bit more about uh, 2021. Uh, first of all, as a farmer, I know how things can change so quickly and <laughs> change the need. Uh, you can't really count on a crop until it's harvested in the bin, and even then, you better get the check for it before you spend it. And uh, so I think we've seen a lot of that uncertainty, but we, we got to it. And we talked about some really good yields that we had in this past year. The USDA National Agricultural Statistics Service uh, confirmed uh, that growers did have a very good production here. We actually had record yields for corn and dust. And so it being signed, the previous record yield of 2017 had not been for areas of eastern North Carolina that have basically ground out with soybeans. I think we would have won that record weight this year. I know in uh, areas that had the good weather, uh, I saw yields, especially in the Piedmont and the foothills and the mountains, that were just unbelievable. And, and my farm was no different. Uh, I've never seen a, a soybean crop like that growing on my farm. But we also had a little bit of success with tobacco this year. Uh, we had a 21,000 acre increase uh, in acreage and a 41% increase in blue cure production, uh, which is good, but not where it needs to be. Uh, we have about 252 million pounds grown. My goal is to uh, meet a level of about 400 million pounds that we can count on year after year, and that's still a work in progress. I think, say, in the last five years, there have been wild and being an understatement, but at least we come a, a momentary break this past year. Uh, we don't know what the future holds with input costs and commodity prices, but from my point of view as a farmer, I've never had a year that was certain. Uh, never had a year that the, the weather was perfect. Never had a year that crop prices met my expectations. And never had a year that input costs didn't cost me a lot more than I thought they were going to. So it's kind of more of the same thing, same thing there. But uh, to quote a friend of mine in Eastern North Carolina, who's a, a fairly large farmer, he says, the thing that I've got to do is steal the benefit first. Uh, if you don't have anything to sell, it doesn't matter what the price is. So we've got to have that good production here again to move forward uh, and to continue to work. I want to go back just a little bit to the impact and the things that happened during the pandemic. And you heard me say we've been challenged in ways that we never made. Those two years uh, brought out things that I never thought I would see. Uh, when we saw the shortages in the grocery store, there were a lot of things that happened that precipitated that. When we started closing the restaurants, all the institutional food down closed schools, colleges, uh, the truth of the matter is over 50% of the food that we consume in the United States is consumed away from the home. So what we did is we took that over 50% of the food supply that had been outside of the grocery store and we moved it right into the grocery store. Well, that wasn't going to work. We have a just-in-time uh, system of retailing agriculture and what that means is the shells go down during the afternoon, they get filled up during the night. And it's pretty much at capacity. So when you throw 
the investment in agricultural research and, of course, the development of global markets. While we've been successful in the endeavors, I haven't seen any kind of food that we're going to get to let up and this list of priorities is not remaining. And, and even more so, as North Carolina continues to change and continues to grow. And we've got to have the natural resources of this state to be able to do what we do as farmers and agriculture. Research, uh, and I've said this before, but we used to be substantive farmers. Uh, we moved now into feeding probably 170, 75 people per farm. And agricultural research is one of them. Uh, the weather has changed certainly, but not that much. And good government policy is always going to drive success. Uh, but the government policy is just part of it. And uh, I think that you can see with some of the input costs that we're looking at today, maybe government policy has had some play in that. Uh, the emphasis has been on uh, other things rather than agricultural input. As I ride across the state, I look at all the new industries that are coming in and that all the jobs that you created. That's going to put in a lot more pressure on the loss of farmland and timberland. Uh, and it just underscores how important the job we're trying to do is. The legislature this year, I need to thank you for increasing the funding of the trust fund uh, for an additional uh, $3 million for the current and $5 million, and added $8 million in non-recurring uh, in each of the next few years for that budget. But if you think about how huge this job is, just the acres that we have lost to solar facilities in North Carolina has far overshadowed the number of acres that we have been able to protect for conservation issues. We have been able to protect uh, some 27,500 acres in North Carolina, and last year was a very, very good year. Uh, we protected over 17,000 acres, and we utilized about $25 million in doing this, but we have to develop partnerships with USDA uh, in the military is the newest, biggest partner. And the purchase of the military bases is as big a problem as anything we have in North Carolina. We are working to protect those bases. And for the first time this year, we actually have a joint easement with the U.S. Air Force. Uh, it's a big easement, uh, and that is huge. Uh, we've got to continue down that road. But when you look at a billion dollar outdoor campus and research triangle park, uh, a 620,000 square foot Amazon warehouse in Smithfield, uh, in my area in Randolph County, a 1.29 billion dollar Toyota manufacturing plant, uh, and all these other major products that are out there, we're going to put more people in the North Carolina. And all of that people moving in means that they're going to live somewhere. There's got to be infrastructure. So that is an ongoing problem. We have invested in the future in North Carolina as far as ag and uh, agribusiness are concerned. We go to the Agri Science Center uh, this year. Uh, and if you haven't seen it, it is a wonderful, wonderful facility. Nothing is like this in the nation exists except right here. Uh, it is state of the art, uh, the science, we have the scientific equipment, and right now the personnel can do what we need to do for the future. And then when you go on top of that, the, the plant science initiative at NC State that is uh, a hot pass as well. I think they've got the grand opening in April. Those are two major building blocks for the future, and I believe that it is a great investment for this state to have these facilities. I'm a firm believer in building on your strength, and time and time and time again, agriculture and agricultural business have proven to be North Carolina's strength. So we have got to do even more to help these industries be successful in the future. Uh, our legislature has been great in support of the things that we need to do, but there are going to be more things that need to be done in the future. We've only scratched the surface on what we can achieve with technology. Uh, I'm going to be old school, and when I look at where we've come from in just my time and lifetime, where we are today with technology, it's amazing. And I mentioned expanding. 
take simply because I have a relationship with them or somebody in the department had a relationship with them and they have a level of trust with us that they didn't have for other straight agencies. So we became kind of a uh, go between between companies that didn't trust what was going on medically or uh, clinically with COVID, but being able to put people together and work together, uh, it worked swiftly. But we should not miss one day of working to make agriculture successful. I am proud of what we do in the Department of Agriculture, and I hope that comes across. Uh, but the reason we do it is because of the people that work in this department that are so dedicated, that are willing to step outside the block, to blur the lines, to go do what we need to do to make this thing successful. So at this time, I would like all of my employees that are here uh, to stand up and please join me in thanking them for what they do today in the state of North Carolina.